Hey guys, this is really wild. We've had months with no Android watches and now I have two launching on exactly the same day from the same company, Cospet. We're going to look at the uh, Cospet Prime S, a budget $100 Android watch, and the Cospet Optimus 2, a high-end, top-of-the-line flagship $200 watch. Whichever review you're watching right now, look around, because the other one is going up at the same time. Have fun! Greetings and welcome to Smartwatch Ticks. We're a YouTube channel on the web at smartwatchticks.com. This is a day, it really is a day I'm so happy to share with you for the unveiling of the Prime S special smartwatch directly from Cospet. This is one of their prototype units that's fully packaged for retail that they sent out for me to share with you and to let you know you can pick it up directly from the Cospet website using the link in the show notes down below they've got it at a reduced price and watch that it may be going up or down not sure because this is the official launch for uh, premiere of this particular Prime S smartwatch what's so great about it you're about to find out it's uh primarily the thing that i love the most is the fact that it's got its second camera on the top like the genesis did those of you who are used to the uh, chronos blade genesis that came out in early 2020 before the pandemic kind of shut everything down and put it out of business that was a watch it really was same basic 1.6 inch watch it's back again. This is a, a different screen now. It's an IPS type of a screen instead of the transflective. But it's um, visible outdoors uh, in bright light. You can you know, still see it when the, the brightness is all the way up. So you can use that uh, top camera on it. It's um, It's got some basic specs. We'd like to see more. We'd like to see Android 10. We'd like to see 3 or 4 gigabytes of RAM. We'd like to see 128 gigabytes of storage, but we don't. We don't. This is an entry-level, brand-new technology watch with a lot of other things going for it. So if you want a marginal watch to get you in the door with the new capabilities and the only one on the market with that top-facing camera, this is going to be it. Uh, Prime S, it's got Bluetooth 4.1, it's got this new processor suite. There's two different processors working here. We'll show you how that works in a minute. One gigabyte, 16 gigabyte storage. You've got um, a brand new tethering app called Gao, G-A-O, Gao Fit, not the Y Watch 2. It's by the same YT group, but it's a different, uh, a different app. So a lot of new things in this. This is the watch language, the bands for the 4G. It only has a 2.4G uh, gig uh, Wi-Fi support, not the 5 gig, which is really odd. All of the watches recently have had both, but I'm sure you support 2.4. That's just the, the circuit that you're going to need to use when you connect it. We got front. Uh, five megapixel pointing at you and they call it side but that's the top camera is a full true eight megapixel camera so yeah not only is the camera in the right spot it's good quality it's like the just one step down from the 12 gig 12 megapixels that uh the prime has uh but uh of the prime 2 but this being the prime s it's a uh, five five megapixel really good though you got gps it's an ip67 waterproof not really swimmable but as you'll see in the design the back is a lot more sealed and secured than it used to be a uh, multi-sport modes heart rate and blood oxygen now is added to this as well as sleep monitoring which wasn't on these watches before you got weather support and everything else there's your size 1.6 inch 400 by 400 um, TFT IPS and look at this the battery is a 1080 milliamp hour and they call it one to two days in Android mode but this sport mode gets you a full week and you don't really lose a whole lot shifting into it as you're about to see it really is a worthy standby mode unlike the earlier ones that all you got was black and white time on the screen and couldn't do anything else even connection with phone calls or anything well this is this takes it to a whole new level um, and dimensions and information there so diving into the box 
the watches here. I've already peeled the cover off, which is why, or the film, which is why the bubbles. But I wanted to show you, you have film on here. You also have film on the back you want to be careful uh, to remove. But I didn't put that one back on. You got a standard TPU band with a little spot here that will uh, sync up with the uh, the last of the sliders here. So when you wear it, it's going to be nice. It's not going to fly out on you. They are removable bands and this is the watch. This is it. The um, camera is on the right hand side now. You've got two buttons. There's the top camera we talked about. You have the SIM card here instead of on the bottom and the bottom has been replaced with this huge array of red and green diodes and sensors. Speakers right there. There's your charging uh, apparatus right here too. Notice this sticks up just a little bit so when it presses against your skin it's going to make nice contact and you won't have a lot of light leaking out at night since you might be wearing this at night because it has that sleep monitoring capability for light and deep sleep and awake time all those things. As far as accessories we've got the little um, pin that you use to eject the side for putting in your SIM card. Now with it on the side, it makes it really easy if you want to. You can open this up and take the SIM in your current phone and put your regular phone SIM, if it's AT&T or T-Mobile, on the GSM network. If it's compatible, take that SIM, put it in here, go out for your jog and still be connected just like you were to your phone to any calls, right? And texts. When you get back, take it out of here and pop it back into your phone. Just move the SIM between them. In the USA, I hear in Europe you can get uh, mirrored SIMs or duplicate SIMs um, so they'll ring in both places and you don't have to worry about that. But US doesn't support that. This is the charging cable and I wanted to ask if you noticed anything special about it. Look at that. It's a T-head and it's got a little pin line alignment thing there. And when you look at the back here, you see you've got a little slot and it actually connects like this with the wire running down the arm. That's one design flaw I would say. Uh, that's not, I guess if you lay it down on the ground you can do that. It's very flexible. But it would make a lot more sense to me if it came in from the side like we see in most of them. But have you seen this before? Sure you have. It was specially designed for the uh, Oh, what was this? The Lympho LEM13 DM28, I think. Oh, I keep forgetting how you open this thing. You pull on it somehow. There you go, and it snaps. There it is. There's the same connector. And this one properly came off the side like that. So why we went with, I don't know, but it's very interesting. Anyway, you're going to need another one of these probably. Um, if does, it only comes with one in the box. So remember, you can you can get a backup. If not from Cospet, you can look on uh, Lympho and try to get the same thing for the LEM13 watch, which in a crazy way does have a forward-facing camera when you have it on your arm. One is this way and one's that way. So it's another option if you're going to be using it for photography to take pictures out this direction. This one of course turned too. So very unique but kind of an odd bird this uh, this one. But uh, here we are with this brand new Prime S and its forward facing camera. I've talked long enough haven't I? Yes! Listen to everybody. No! No! You've got to show the manual before you turn it on uncle. You guys do know that if you're really bored with me you can just scrabble through to when you actually see the watch come on. But for the rest of you that want everything there is to know about this, there's this uh, subscribe thing that you can play with. And here's a special note from Martin, the founder of Cospet. That comes in the box as well as the Prime S manual, which again is going to give you a review of the specs, some safeguards. And there you go. In a color picture, you've got... Um, they call it the side camera at the top, and then the front camera facing forward is this way. Speaker is in the back. And we'll talk about that. That's an interesting and odd place for the speaker, too, the mic and SIM and how you put the SIM. And notice that you put the, uh, uh, the label up so that the pins are facing downward. That's always a question when you pop these things out. There's your charging connector. 
It even shows it kind of coming out from the side, but it doesn't. It goes in the end. Here's the QR code to scan for the GAO, GaoFit app. There's only about 100 downloads so far. It's brand spanking new, folks. A lot of this is really new technology. That's what it's going to look like when you get it connected to the uh, app. It's relatively straightforward uh, to connect it. It's Bluetooth, uh, of course, so you need to have that on. You scan a QR code to connect it. And unlike before, where you get the QR code for the app and then you get the one for the watch, this one, it, it gives you the one to actually connect the watch. And if you don't have it, you tap a button and it'll give you the QR code on the watch that then you can, uh, you know, see with your, your phone and download the app to your phone as well. But I highly recommend you get the uh, app directly from the Google Play Store. And the link in the show notes here on this video will uh, just click you right over to the Google Play Store so you can download it there. I'm whipping through this because I know if it gets in focus, you guys can just freeze frame it and take a look at it if you want to. Bunch of different watch faces on this one. And of course, a watch face uh, directory that you can download extra faces. And you can put custom faces in. At the end of the video, I got a surprise special face to show you. It's coming from the um, full Android watch community. Okay, and that is the manual. It's the whole thing. It's in English in its own envelope. So this is really set for global marketing now. It's not just a dual Chinese, U.S. global um, device. To start it up, the buttons are backwards. So the power button's on the bottom and your back button's on the top. So a long press, hold, it vibrated, and there's the Cospet logo as it boots up. I want to mention that this watch with its top camera is pretty much the same configuration as we saw in the... Um, the Kronos Blade Genesis, right? And that's what is so exciting about this. This is the only watch on the market now, since this is discontinued, that has this top-facing camera. By way of comparison, they've got the bump for the front-facing camera on the opposite sides. It was on the left as you wore it on the, um, the Genesis. It's on the right here. Just like the Prime itself, this is the Prime S, uh, on the cost bet. Uh, the backs are totally different though. Like I said, the SIM card thing has been moved over to the side. It's making its little sound right now. Um, this was a thicker watch. They've actually made the new one thinner uh, and added in that same 5 megapixel cam, 8 megapixel camera up at the top. So here we go. It loads up with this first face. I absolutely love this. This face, there, just updated. This face is showing you the minutes of the hour, then the hour down there, and then the dates in here and everything, of course. But it's really a big, bright, white time. So when I glance at my watch, I can see it's 32 past the hour. If I don't know what hour it is, I've had too much libation. And I can always look it up down here. So it's 33 after 12 right now. We're going to get into the faces late. This is going to be a long review, guys. This is new technology. So I hope you're kicking back and enjoying yourself. Power level's now here instead of in that circle around the edges. There's your Bluetooth connection and your SIM connection. Date and time is all on that first panel. Swiping here, you see the little dots up here. From here, if I swipe over, I get my controls. So I'm on my brightness right now. There's full bright and there's soft. So soft is really nice for night level. And I, I can run it at about half brightness for this video and it won't wash out. It's timing out pretty quickly on me because I haven't changed that yet. We'll fix that. Airplane, this is your cellular communications. This is your twist your wrist to see the time. Uh, or not. Bluetooth and Wi-Fi are shown there. Here is the system mode thing. We're going to go into that later, but this is how you switch it between Android mode and sports mode. And it's sweet. This is your typical clean up the background stuff uh, that might be lingering on, and that's it. So you have those things there. When you go left, you're getting into your notifications from, from either the phone or from within the watch uh, pushed over there. Uh, when you go up, you're getting into your sports stuff. This is your step count information and your historical data. It's all set for um, kilometers and calories and stuff, not uh, English. So we don't have the ability to switch 
as far as I can see so far, like to Fahrenheit and to miles and all of that. But that's there. Come over here and you get a music player. Come over here and when you get it updated and on the network and GPS loaded, you'll get the uh, weather in your area as well. And those are all of the things. And you notice I touch it and it bumps right back up to the top. You're not having to go all over to get back to the watch face. So we've covered that. We've covered that, we've covered that, and of course, going over here, now we get to the app drawer and we get to the fitness section. The fitness section looks familiar. It's kind of a map over of all of the different things that we had from uh, outdoor run to rope skipping, and it is integrated with GPS. When you get in here now, you've got your standard apps, and they're a little bit different, so I want to take time to show you in phone, you're getting your call records, your call history, and your contacts grouped into one plus the ability to bring up the, uh, the number pad so you can place the call directly. All integrated into that one app, which is great. You want to check your contacts here. You can do that. You can bring them in, as I understand, from Google when you log in and or a SIM card. Uh, lots of different ways. And, of course, your SMS text messaging is pretty basic, and it's right here. And you can compose one, right? Oh, all right. I know a lot of you guys want to at least see the keyboard. Um, Come on up, keyboard. There you go. That's the number keyboard that you put in, and it's the same layout for the text keyboard when you're ready to do that. That's in the SMS. Settings, we're going to come back to a lot of different things there. Now the fun stuff. Heart rate, blood pressure, sleep time, and breath training. All of these involve that diode array at the back. So let me clear things out and show you this. Okay, slide over. We've got heart rate. Tap heart rate. It starts to monitor to read it. And notice it's using the green diode down there. You see that? Okay, we get a heart rate pretty quickly um, using that PPG, they call it technology. Of course, I messed around with it. Now it has to think again. There we go, 74. So it's tracking heart rate that way, but when you go into blood oxygen now, it triggers the red diode to be the operating diode for getting that uh, information. There we go, 99, typical. Okay, so that's your blood oxygen. Sleep is an interesting thing now. It doesn't have anything to do with the diodes in the back, but uh, when you sleep with the watch, it should be able to compute your total sleep time and give you a score based on whatever algorithm it's using. Also show you your awake, light sleep, and deep sleep time. That's brand new too. And then there's this breath training, which is a rather unique, uh, interesting app. You can't actually start it. You can change the time of how long you want to do your breathing exercise, but you can't hit start until it turns green. It turns green once it's acquired your heart rate. So when you do this, it's going to actually give you your baseline heart rate of when you started, have you inhale and exhale over and over for your set time, and at the end, report what your finishing heart rate is. So you can see how well your mindfulness activity is helping you to relax. Really good to use this after a workout to help you come to a calm place or if you're having a stressful day. That's in the breath training. The rest of the stuff is typical. You've got your basic browser, but of course you could install um, Chrome if you wanted to. Um, security warning, problem with the security certificate of this one. Yeah, I would recommend you use probably a different browser all in all than, um, than this one. You can't bail out of it either. Uh, the camera, we'll come back to that. So camera and settings we got to come back to in gallery. Here's your basic calendar, uh, which is uh, still the same old simple calendar. Um, you have an alarm clock setting, music player. This is your sound recorder, and I guess we could test it. Hello, this is a test of the sound recorder, and we're going to just see how it sounds, how loud it is. Stop, check, check, and it's been saved, and here I can play it. Hello, this is a test of the sound recorder, and we're going to just see how it sounds, how loud it is. Now we can discuss that speaker issue. You notice that the speaker is here on the back, on the underneath surface, on the top, near where the camera is. 
Weird. Really, really. It's not on the side. It's not down here. Plenty of room there where it would be nice and loud to hear. And if you had a phone call, you could put it up to your ear and listen to it right there. No, it's here. And it's the tiniest little cover. Hello, this is a we'll mute it. So if you have this pressed tight against your skin, there's a good chance you're going to have problems with hearing the audio, which is kind of soft to begin with. Strike two. Um, I'm not happy with the charging wire being a T, and I'm definitely not happy with the um, way the audio is being produced through this and how it sounds. Um, you got the camera on the top. It's the only one. File manager. Your typical shows you how much you're using and how much you have left and those kind of things. We only have 16 gigabytes, so be ginger with it. Your weather is on there. The overall fitness, you want to start here, guys, for the fitness thing. Actually, let me pop it off. It's easier to work with like this. Uh, here, we you, you've got... Um, you see how they're in different cards form now. This is becoming the new standard instead of those pictures like we saw before. Uh, but it is... All of the activities are there, and you can set targets. If you swipe over, any results of previous activities will be here, and you swipe once more, and you want to do this. You want to use the positioning. That will turn on the GPS. Now, if you're not going to need to do GPS, if you're planning on not using it, definitely turn it off so it doesn't uh, use up battery power. That's why its default is off. But before you start doing your fitness from here, you want to make sure that you have gone into the fitness app itself and swiped over and activated that. Okay? I'm going to turn it off because we're not going to be doing that right now. And after here, you've got your desktop settings. This is your dial selection, which we'll look at shortly. When you press and hold, you can get that. And this is the menu style. And you've seen this. We've got kind of the curve going on right now. You can also do a menu style desk uh, straight up and down where the icons come in a little bit. You can do, if you don't need the names, you can do three in a row or you can have the circle with the time clock in it. Any of those options are available to you um, for the desktop layout which we got to down here, desktop settings. And uh, your switch styles, this is the different ways it will work when you slide from one side to the other. That's a pushing one. And there's several, several more. We've seen that all before in Android 10, I believe. So it's starting to migrate. Uh, this is a crossover watch between all that. There's your standard Google. Play Store, Maps, those are all the same. And optimization is as the new versions are supporting. You want to go in there, you want to go into Clean Task, and you want to tap here. And if you've installed any third-party apps that need to run in the background, like Display Brightness or Floating Toucher, which do both work on this watch, you'll want to deactivate them so they don't disable as soon as the screen goes off. That's the place you do it. Just mentioning it right now. I know it's a little detailed for those of you brand new, but you're going to eventually need to know that, so we're telling you right now. You can set up screen lock and face unlock. Third-party app adapter is something that helps make uh, things like in browsers look a little bit better. An app freeze nobody uses <laughs> that I know of, but it's supposed to get you out of apps that freeze. You got the watch face store, which when you're on the internet, which I am now on Wi-Fi, connects into a basic uh, simple store that has a variety of faces that you can pick any of them, hit download. Uh, it'll go to that server, download the face, install it, and then when you come out of here, you'll automatically be switched to that new face at the end of all of your faces. And that's what we just did there. The app store, different from the play store, is a place where there's just a few little extra things like a stopwatch or access to Facebook or WhatsApp 
uh, without having to have a Google account set up. It's already got the calculator installed and you can install the flashlight. So not much, but just a little bit. That's your Google, no, not your Google Assistant. This is your overall assistant for connecting to the GowFit app. This is where you connect the phone you get the QR code, like I said, for this watch. So once you have the app installed on your phone, you can just simple as do that. If you don't have the app, hit the question mark, and now you get the QR code that you could scan to download the app and then use that. Once you're there, you have the remote capture from there, the music control to play music on your watch from the phone. Nope, on your phone from the watch, getting it backwards. And then, of course, find your device will vibrate your phone if you've lost it. There's a separate face unlock. It's the same one as what we saw over there. This is where you can activate it. And then the calculator, which is the, the app that was already installed from that uh, special app store. Those are all the stock apps that come with it. Now watch carefully. When I swipe down, I'm in the pages that we have up here for all of your controls and the system mode, which is currently set to Android mode. In that mode, I can slide over to the apps and I have everything. Your phone stuff, settings, your body measurement stuff, sleep, breath training, access to the camera, alarm clocks, music players, your standard file manager, weather, fitness, you name it. The Google Maps optimization, assistance, even specialty uh, apps that you put in, like Organized Drawer, which is awesome because this will allow you to list all of your apps in alphabetical order, <laughs> avoiding having to hunt them down in this crazy kind of a non intuitive listing. However, what I wanted to show you is when we come up here to system mode and we activate it and it switches to the sport mode. We're back on the same watch faces. All your watch faces are there. Up here you've got these things like you had before and now we're in sport mode and if you come over here notice we don't have any of the calling stuff but we have heart rate, blood pressure, or, or blood oxygen rather, no blood pressure on this one, uh, sleep, breath training, camera stuff is available, fitness, music player, and that's it. All of your other apps are gone. They're not there. Uh, and that's because this has handed off the operation of the watch to the super low power processor. About 80% of the activity is being handled by that other low power processor. A set of circuitry so that you can get longer battery life. When you come back, you switch it from sport mode back to Android mode. It's literally rebooting into a different processor. Now we're back to Android mode. Now when you come over here, you see you've got everything back again like we had it before. So that's how this special um, system mode switching works and what you get when you change. In terms of settings, you got your basic network uh, for Wi-Fi. By the way, like, uh, I think I mentioned uh, we only have the 2.4 uh, megabyte um, frequency for Wi-Fi, not the 5. So, um, yeah, you, you only get one of those instead of your choice of either. But it should still work for you. Bluetooth, uh, your apps and notifications where you can do your permissions, your overall battery, the display. This is where you can set up your sleep time if you want to, twist your wrist to see the time or have it light up if notifications come in. That's all available there. Uh, sound and storage and all those things. The location services is on and these are the things that are using it. If you're not turning it on through the fitness app, you want to come over here and turn it on anytime you're going to be like trying to get weather. The first time you want to get weather, it needs your location. So set that whole GPS thing up and activate it as you're setting up your watch, you'll be happy you did. Your overall Google account services and stuff, and then system, which is where you have your uh, languages and keyboards. You can set your date and all that kind of stuff and uh, reset the watch if you want to. When you get into about the phone, this is where you're going to get your, um, your basic information and do your wireless update. If there's one waiting for you, you simply go in here. It'll check it automatically. If it doesn't, you hit down at the bottom. Uh, said network connection failed, but uh, 
Not sure why it's doing that. All right, I guess I'm not on Wi-Fi right now. Anyway, that's where you would do that. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom past your IMEI number and all that other stuff, you'll get your build number. And you see I'm currently running version 1.3, uh, which is the latest version of the firmware as this was shipped out, uh, being a prototype watch. Yours may be higher, maybe 1.4, 1.5. Depends on how quickly and frequently they're updating it. It's June the 3rd. And we're at the very end of June, uh, roughly. That um, so they're doing it pretty quickly. So we're left with what? What? Come on, come on. Yeah, he knows. He's always interested in the camera. So let's pop up the camera over here. Oh yeah, we got to look at the app too. All right, real quickly. There's uh, the front, the top camera. So you can see it right there. Uh, because of the backlighting, it's not too good i don't have anything fun to take a picture of oh i'm off the screen sorry but i'll try a picture of my hand just to do a demo of some stuff okay there we've got a picture i come over here i press this and i press that and now i'm looking down at it myself and i'll take a picture of me hello he did it do it yeah and again the camera's on the right side of this so if you have it on your left arm and you're trying to control it um, it gets in the way that's why the genesis was on this side so that if you're left if you're right-handed and you have this on your left arm you wouldn't be covering the camera but you are on this one they because it's the prime and they already had the design so they just shifted it back uh, that way you have a few other things that you can control there um, and now we're back out to the top camera. But what we want to do is take you into gallery and show you these pictures. I know there's that's why these reviews are so darn long. There's so much we got to talk about. Notice it flipped it. I was on the other side, right? So this is a reverse image. If you're taking any pictures, selfie with signs in the background, they're going to be inverted. Um, that's why a lot of folks use third-party camera apps, which do interface with these camera modules instead. I wanted to give you my details on this one. You see it's four. 1944 by 2592 multiply those you come up just shy of 5 million it's a 5 megapixel camera come over here get the information details and you see you multiply those together you'll get 8 megapixels so we've got uh two uh measurements and when you zoom in there's my aura ring you guys saw the review of the aura ring right yeah this is actually an electronic ring that's amazing check check it out you go to smartwatchticks.com use the magnifying glass and search on oura aura aura ring if you want to know about the this is the one thing i always wear yes yes um and when i'm back over here on this one i can double tap and you can get in pretty close and pretty sharp too so uh, no it doesn't support the pinch and zoom it and it's only one level of double tap but it does support that in the camera implementation on this watch. Whoa, check this out, guys. I want to stick this in here right now because I was talking to Alrod about watch faces. And wouldn't it be cool if you could have a watch face, especially with these fun cameras that looks like a regular watch face, but actually had a little hidden button in here that would allow you to bring up the camera, take a picture if you wanted to, click, click, and... Go about your merry way. And if you wanted to check it later, sure would be nice to be able to touch a button and bring up the gallery and go into the gallery and take a look at the picture you just took or any pictures you took earlier. Well, he came up with one. I love it. This is one of his older watch faces, but it's a doozy. It's a nice one, and it's going to work well. And speaking of watch faces... For those of you who want the watch faces, here they are. You saw the first one. Uh, here's another one. It's a really nice design. I think these are based on a Ferrari um, concept that are in here. I say that because I got another watch coming in, not Android, that's using what looks like these same faces. Going to be a more simple um basic watch but it, they look like those faces okay here's a different one static i don't have any touch spots on here but i do on another one coming up 
Uh, this is an animated face, so it shows you that the graphic animation works. These are brand new Cospet faces. You might see these on other watches coming up. This is the first we've seen them here. Are they active? No. I touch them, they don't change as far as I can tell, but they do loop and flip and have a fun time, so they're definitely eye candy. You get some more red and black and silver style. So that's the theme on this watch. This watch we've seen for a while. You're getting your heart rate and uh, step count data, but they're not touchable. That's another stock one. So is that one that we've seen before. Um, here's a soft one for nighttime. Uh, that was really good when you have your brightness down low and you just want to barely see the time. That's another one we've seen quite a bit of already. Um, that one too. That one's been familiar. Here's one that's branded Cospet. Look at that. Okay. And come on, come on. There's another similar one. Another one. Uh... This is the one, yeah, 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 there, I touched it, and, oh, wow, it's got the, the, the voice recording is now playable. Hello, this is a test of the sound recorder, and we're going to just see how it sounds, how loud it is. Okay, it'll play the Hello, recording. Oh, and loop them. Recording. Well, that's fun. Okay, we've got an animated GIF kind of thing. Uh-oh. <laughs> it's running in the background. Pause. All right, didn't know that. And then this is uh, this will take you into your Google um, thing, your, your Google search thing. Not the audio response, but it takes you to the text. And there's the keyboard that we have to work with on this one. You can, I believe, tap in here, bail out of here, and use that microphone to do your audio input if you want to. But that watch face has the active touch spots, which is what I wanted to show you. And now, from the full Android watch team, from Gin and Tonic, check this one out. Isn't that cool? I love this face. Look at the 3D-ness of it. Look at the, wow, look at, wow, look at it. <laughs> As you know, it'll kind of race around when you first load it. So I'm going to load it again for you. There, you see how it flipped through all of the different uh, digits? So you got your hour and your minutes and stuff around the border. But uh, really a nice uh, overall watch. And this is one of many. So a little advertisement for these guys. They're great. They're free. They're at fullandroidwatch.org. Uh, and in the show notes, I'll have you a link directly to the thread where everybody is uh, posting their custom uh, watch faces. And you can download whichever ones you like. And thanks, Gin and Tonic. Great work. Awesome. All right. App time. Let's pop this puppy up. It's called the Gow Fit. It is, uh, like I say, basically brand new. Um, we can translate it so you can actually read it. And it uh, has all of 100 plus downloads. So really just getting started. Considering it's an Android smartwatch app now, this might become a standard. When you go to select the device, it's going to actually show you the picture and give you the connection. And, of course, we are tethered Bluetooth, so it's connected. Shows me the power level over there. Whoop, and then it disconnects. I'm having a few disconnect connect problems with it, so it's a little bit buggy yet, but room for improvement. In terms of the health, you now have step, sleep, and a health area that when you went in here would give you your heart rate information. You can set an upper limit um, and you can get a uh, heart rate range portrayed on here. No data on this yet. We're just doing the unboxing. Here's the blood oxygen, same kind of thing. You get the data, it would show up uh, in here. So what the YWatch 2 app lacked in anything really related to health other than heart rate, you're now able to pick up in here. You got your weight uh, that you can put in in the watch when you're first setting it up, and it will record this. And, of course, you can update it as uh, you want to. And a target weight. I don't know that it has any programs to help you either gain or lose weight to reach that target, but at least it can show you what it's doing. So we've got that. You've got the overall store here for dials, and this is the same list of dials that you could download directly onto the watch if you want to. 
and here they are in um, display here on the app itself. Not as many as we've seen in the server on other Android watches, so it looks like they're kind of recreating this. There's the one we downloaded that you saw already. Um, so I would expect we're going to see this grow significantly over time, and they'll have the themed ones for the different holidays, but right now it's just getting started. And then mine is where you put in your basic information, your nickname, your gender, birth date, weight, height, all that stuff. Those are the stock values. I usually take those for the review. Um, your sports permission settings, uh, you set this all up so the watch will run properly in the background on the app will run on the on the phone um, you bow you can visit the forum now when you tap this it's taking you over to this uh, discourse dot blah 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 which is the full android watch uh, front door for um, that we're talking about where you can get the watch faces and all that stuff by the way, they have a full support section for this watch, the Prime S. Just use the uh, magnifying glass, put in the search term Prime S, hunt for it, hunt for it. You get a listing of all the things that hit with Prime in here. Scroll down far enough and you get the Prime 2. Here you go, official support thread for the Prime S. Get into this. You get a greeting from Pablo11, the leader of the group here. And then, of course, people posting all sorts of information. Here's all the pictures of the uh, marketing background that you can look at. And there's, of course, discussions about this um, and more and more and more. In fact, this particular post is a really, really good detailed one. So good that I actually printed it out. So you can freeze this and read it at your leisure. Yeah, good form, great watch faces, and a quality product that Cospet has now put out from their official store. You can pick this up. Check the show notes for the link over there. It's the Cospet Prime S smartwatch. We're hovering between 100, 130 or so on this watch. Uh, also, I did a pre-release, a kind of a sneak peek of this one video a week or so ago. Make sure you go back and check that one out as well for some additional information. Thanks for watching and sticking through to the end, and we'll see you again soon.